Dave Palumbo here in Fort Myers, Florida, and we are here at the Henry Ford and Thomas Edison Winter Retreat Homes. Uh, Thomas Edison was a big plant guy, you know. I'm into, you know, animals, but I'm also into plants too. This tree I'm standing right behind or in front of is the Kapok tree. It's the tallest tree in the Amazon, and you can see those roots that come out. They're super cool. I know Thomas Edison had a lot to do with nurturing these, these trees and bringing them here all the way back over 100 years ago. I mean, this is, this is just an enormous tree, and I'm sure it's, it's getting bigger every single year. And we're going to see a whole bunch of crazy shrubbery and different exotic trees in this locale here. Plus, once we get inside his house, we're going to see what the first swimming pool looked like as well, as well as some of his other inventions. So, guys, stay tuned. Follow me in, and I think I'm going to teach you guys a thing or two today. This is a fig tree behind me. I know it looks like multiple trees. It's actually one tree. If you look in the distance, you can see the central trunk where it originally came out of the ground, and it just kind of branched out and drops its roots directly into the ground. Now, when I say fig tree, I mean figs, like the figs you eat. You can see them, they're laying on the floor here. You can pick them up and actually eat them. Um, and it, it, it's got to be one of the biggest fig trees in the world, I would think. I mean, Thomas Edison brought this here, like I said, over 100 years ago, and it's just flabbergasting to see and look around and see all these separate little offshoots of this this one big huge tree. Uh, the fig tree is in the family of ficus or ficus trees and uh, there's many different varieties but obviously this one has to be the biggest. This is obviously the model T Ford that uh, Henry Ford developed. You know he was the first person to actually be able to commercially make a vehicle that was viable and affordable to the public. He put it on, he created the first assembly line where cars could be assembled cheaply so that regular working people can actually afford them. Uh, the original cars actually had wood wheels. Uh, Harvey Firestone, who was, who was Thomas Edison's friend, took this car that Henry Ford gave to Edison and he, he put rubber wheels on it. And obviously Firestone became a big tire maker eventually. Matter of fact, Henry Ford, Edison, and Firestone combined their, I guess you could say, brain power together and figured out how to grow domestic plants that would be able to produce rubber so that they can make the wheels because they don't want to depend on foreign, uh, foreign people to get their rubber from. So, I mean, the three of them together were just super geniuses. And uh, I mean, look at this. This is the actual car that Thomas Edison and Henry Ford would actually take into downtown Fort Myers for a little joy ride, so to speak and to meet with people, and uh, it, it's incredible. Matter of fact, this car is actually wider than the typical Model T. It's called the S Southern Model T because in, in Fort Myers there were no roads, and they had uh, dirt roads, and they had the wheel from the horse and buggies had rivets in them. So there was actually depressions in the, in the, in the soil of the roads, so these cars were a little wider to fit with directly into the wheel depressions and it ran perfectly. Obviously when he switched to rubber it was a much smoother ride but the original wood wheels had to be a brutal brutal ride uh, and I'm sure they cracked you know for quite frequently. This is the first battery ever invented, first commercial primary battery. Edison was involved in obviously obtaining the basic patent rights for it and without a battery there's no car. This is the first toaster oven basically. You put pieces of bread in here and it would brown them on both sides. It's crazy. This is the Edison phonograph that he designed. This is the record player essentially, the precursor to it. Interestingly enough, Edison was going deaf when he made this and he couldn't really hear the sound. So what he did was he created a wood frame around it. You can see this wood frame. And if you look, this is the exact wood frame that he used. You can actually see bite marks. What he would do is he would bite into the wood and when the record player would play, he would hear the, the vibrations and he would know that there would be sound coming out. It's, it's, uh, I mean, the guy was a genius. It's unbelievable when you think about how he did this. What's so amazing here is that Edison planted all these trees on his property. They were all exotic tropical trees from the Amazon, from overseas, from weird islands. And the amazing thing that you don't got to remember is that there were, there were no airplanes back then and there were no... Uh, internet to order them on, so he had to bring in these clippings from all these exotic locales. Who the hell knows how he even did it? Uh, I mean, if you look at this tree right here, this is a mango tree. Look at they got actual real fruit growing on them. You know, we're not allowed to pick them, but I mean, this is he had real fruit trees that he was eating here, uh, right on his property. I mean, where the hell you get a mango tree? I mean, he had orchids here. I mean, this is just amazing. 
All right, this tree is for Johnny and Kareen. It's the Puerto Rican hat palm tree, and it's from Puerto Rico. It's a palm tree that's native there. He pro Johnny probably has one in his backyard, but not this big, that's for sure. Uh, so Johnny, I was thinking about you. All right, we're here at the Edison Pool. Now, you gotta remember, people didn't have pools in the early 1900s. This is one of the first real pools. It's got a diving board and everything. I'm sure it was, I heard it was re renovated in the early 20s, but uh, Edison would you know, have company over. He would entertain here. There's a little tea room over here too, you can see, where he would sit and they would kind of like, there's a changing room in this little cottage over here. And they would kind of hang out here. And then when they go want to get, get hot, they go in the water and uh, chill out. The entire Edison estate was actually on the Caloosahatchee River. If you turn around and look, you will see, you'll see that the estate buttresses the river here. And obviously, uh, this goes into the uh, ocean, or the Gulf, I should say, eventually. The, the Edison had a perfect setup here. He had like a tropical oasis he built with all these exotic plants, the pools, he's got the pond over there. Then he's got this whole lake here. So, and we haven't even gotten to his house yet. I mean, this is just like, uh, this had to be beautiful, but when he came here, you had to realize this was like like forest. It was like it was wild. They had to tame this down. Now it's uh, an oasis, but I'm sure initially when he first got here, it, it didn't look like this. All right, we're standing outside the Edison guest house. This is where people like me, guests of him, would stay. Uh, you can see it's a pretty big uh, deal. A lot of bedrooms here, and it's kind of I guess it was like the hotel of its day because there really weren't any hotels. If you look in the distance, you'll see the actual Edison house. That's his house, and we're going to head over there, take a look and peek in his bedroom uh, in a little bit. But uh, so this is, he had a, every amenity you can imagine here, you know. People can stay here, he had friends over, he had his own little private uh, house over there. He had the, the, the guest quarters, I mean, or the, the I should say, the, the people who caretakers quarters. We saw that a little earlier. So, you know, he had every base covered. And when we go down to Ford's house, Henry Ford's house, we'll see what he had. I bet his house was even more extravagant. If you look into the guest sitting room, this is the guest house, you can see this, this beautiful, what I would call a chandelier. They were actually called electroliers back then. Thomas Edison actually designed that. He was the first one to design that uh, using obviously his electric light bulb invention. And he made the first real, what I would call a chandelier. You know, they called it electrolier. In the distance you could see the piano. His wife, Mina, played the piano. And supposedly, according to the story, Edison had, had met his wife at a, some kind of a party. She was playing there, and that's what won his heart. So that, that, everyone in his house played the piano, but that was uh, mostly his wife who was on there. We're at the actual home now of Thomas Edison, and if you look in, we can take a peek into his bedroom where him and his wife, Minna, lived. And they would come here over the winters to escape the cold weather of New Jersey. And this is original everything. They, obviously, you see they have two beds. They're kind of like just pushed together. I guess they weren't any king-size beds back then. And, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't huge. You know, I guess no one really had big, huge rooms back then. Maybe it was hard to heat or keep the heat in. Uh, they had a nice bathroom. There's a tremendous closet there. And you can't s smell it, but I can smell it. You can smell it. It smells old in here. And uh, you can just see that this is where they kind of just hung out in here. Okay. Uh, this is the kitchen, I guess, where all the food was prepared. And you can see it looks small by our standards, but probably back then, probably no one had kitchens. So uh, they had a nice sink, double sink. And in the distance, you could see the refrigerator. It was probably called the ice box back then. I don't know if they had actually an electric refrigerator. It was probably packed with ice. And, uh, you know, this is where the food was made. I'm standing outside the Henry Ford winter home here. It was right next door to his good friend Thomas Edison. You know, Ford actually worked for Edison at his uh, electrical lighting you know, company initially until he designed his own, obviously, Model T Ford, the first car, and the rest is history. But in 1916, um, this estate went up for sale and he wanted to, uh, Ford bought it so that he can be next door uh, during the winters to his, you know, I guess his, it was his mentor of sorts, Edison. And they would sit here on this porch, right here. I mean, you can see it, uh, talking business and, and about inventions. And they would just escape the winters of New Jersey and Michigan here. And it was called the mangoes, this estate, because there's so many mango trees everywhere. There was fruit, there were grapefruits, there were oranges. And uh, since then, they have, they've cut some of those down. But you can still see the mangoes trees all over the place. It's a truly, you know, breathtaking type of estate. Consider 
This is the early 20s and this was built. I'm standing here in the coconut groves at the edge of the Henry Ford property. This is just about as far as you can go. We're right here on the edge of the water. You can hear the waves and you can hear the wind. These coconut trees here behind me were actually filled, were actually, I should say, planted in memory of Henry Ford's 150th birthday that took place in 2012. That's right, in 2012, Henry Ford would have been 150 years old. You know, there's an eerie presence here on this property that I feel like, you know, Henry Ford and Edison are actually here. I, I can't describe it, but it, it's, it's surreal. There's a, there's a nostalgic feel here. And to be here with the wind blowing in my face and uh, just breathing the fresh air, and you can just imagine these guys here over their winter, I guess, vacations, just chilling out here, coming up with the new greatest technology and newest ideas of the day. Uh, it can't help but inspire you.